Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of pharmacology. We are doing pharma from uh, Lippincott uh, for this video and the topic is uh, drugs that we use in GI disorders. So uh, I hope that you have been watching my previous videos. Just may have named diarrhea kili drugs or uh, laxatives or uh, different topics cover ki hai GI tract ke. Today's topic is going to be uh, covering all the drugs that we use for irritable bowel syndrome. Now, irritable bowel syndrome is basically um, what we call this in medicine is diagnosis of exclusion because there is no organic cause associated with the signs and symptoms. However, the patient feel chronic abdominal pain and altered bowel habits. Now, when we say altered bowel habits, it basically means that sometimes there is constipation and sometimes there is diarrhea. So, the patient have like altering bowel behaviors and the patient complains of the same. Ke bhai, kabhi mujhe diarrhea rehta hai, kabhi mujhe constipation rehta hai aur pain ki complain bahut common uh, complain hoti hai by the patient. So, but when you investigate, there is no organic cause. Iska matlab kya hai? Matlab ye hai ki aapne x-ray kiya, ultrasound kiya, even biopsy agar kar dali, to aapko koi organic pathology milti nahi hai. So, you don't find anything abnormal uh, in the diagnostic workup. And if this happens, you have excluded everything, ki there is no organic problem, then you label it as IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Now, because the patient have altered bowel movements, the disease is classified as uh, irritable bowel syndrome constipation predominant. Yani, ye wo patients honge, jo kehte hai, mujhe zyada tar kabz rahta hai, zyada tar mujhe constipation rahti hai. So, they are IBS-C, constipation predominant. And then, there is a category of patients who say that we have more diarrhea as compared to constipation. Dr. Saab, zyada tar mujhe diarrhea rahta hai, kabhi kabhi kabz ki shikayat hoti hai. So, these are the patients which we call IBS uh, uh, diarrhea predominant okay so whenever you see in uh, irritable bowel syndrome patients ibs it has to be followed by a constipation predominance or uh, the diarrhea predominance okay so that's the basic thing or sometimes patients say okay, i cannot label it ke mujhe constipation zyada hai ya diarrhea zyada hai mujhe aisa lagta hai dono hi barabar hai baaz din mujhe constipation rehta hai baaz din diarrhea rehta hai so usse hum kehte hain it's a combination category so, these three categories you will get in the clinic clinics mein, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Ki. Ab, chunke is mein koi, uh, organic cause involved nahi hai, so, I mean, there is a big involvement of dietary and psychological modification. So, you have to like talk to the patient, counsel the patient, understand what the patient is going through and sometimes some drugs also have. And key drugs which we use are listed in the same way as this disease ki classification. Hai. So, irritable bowel syndrome which is a constipation predominating uh, category these uh, two drugs are commonly used karte hai, lanaclotide and lubiprostone and then you should know what these drugs are and to understand this you have to refer back to the table below so for example lanaclotide it is used in irritable bowel syndrome constipation predominant category now how does the drug work basically because it's constipation, na? now you want to cause uh, a little more diarrhea-like movement in the patient so that constipation is over. So what this drug does is, it increases the interstitial fluid secretion via increase in cyclic GMP mechanism. So more water in the bowel and uh, you try to get rid of diarrhea. And obviously, the drug ka jo overdose hai, wo uske action ki line pari hota hai. Yani, this drug is alleviating, it is removing, it is uh, getting rid of constipation. So, it's trying to induce a diarrhea-like situation. So, one of the common side effects actually is diarrhea. And because uh, it is increasing the fluid content in the bowel, it will increase the bowel movements. Therefore, patient may also feel abdominal pain. Flatulence because increased bowel activity is there. Abdominal distension because of flatulence. And you avoid this drug in younger uh, patients such as less than 17 years of age. So, if there is constipation predominance, the first drug is lactide and it works by uh, activating the cyclic GMP system. The other drug in this category is the lubiprostone, which is a chloride channel activator. Again, once the channel is activated, just like Vibro cholera, you get more fluid in the bowel and you get more and more flow through the bowel. So, you try to avoid constipation. So, these two drugs are used in the category of irritable bowel syndrome, where constipation is the predominating uh, feature. Then we have the other category, which is the irritable bowel syndrome, where diarrhea is the predominating feature, and the drugs that we use in there are allosterone and uh, eluxodoline and uh, rifaximin. 
so starting from rifaximin it decreases the bacterial load uh, because this is the structural analog of rifampin so that's kind of an antibiotic that you are using and the side effects and once the bacterial load is decreased uh, you try to uh, minimize the diarrhea like situation and the side effects will be because you are disturbing the microbial load of the gut there are risk and chances of developing clostridium difficile infection the opportunistic infection because you should know from your microbiology lectures that the normal flora of the gut is important to maintain health of the gut and if you use antibiotics there is always a risk of developing clostridium difficile infection and the other side effects are nausea um, dizziness headache and things which are intrinsic to the structure of rifampin then eluxidolin is an opioid receptor agonist so opioid is receptor agonist therefore it will cause constipation like scenario and this is what we need because initially the disease is diarrhea predominant okay and because it is causing constipation like scenario the one of the side effect would be constipation abdominal pain will may also be there okay and because it's an opioid receptor there is always a risk of dependence so the patient become dependent on this drug and the okay, kind of wali cheese Elosteron is a um, 5-HT3 antagonist and therefore it causes decrease in the bowel movements inducing constipation like scenario and there can be side effects obviously which you have to uh, remember for this particular drug. So, ye do drugs jo thi, they were for irritable bowel syndrome constipation. These three drugs are then for irritable bowel syndrome diarrhea predominance. And then we have a couple of drugs which are used when the patient is not sure if it's constipation predominance or diarrhea predominance. The patient says, uh, I suffer from both the conditions perhaps equally. So, the drugs you use there are hyosamine and uh, disaclomine. Uh, they are actually very commonly used because many of the patient cannot label their uh, predominance to constipation or diarrhea. So if we talk about dicyclomine, this is an anti-muscuranic and it decreases the GI spasms and motility. Obviously, uh, side effects will be because it is blocking muscarinic receptors. Uh, it is anticholinergic effects. You may see uh, dry mouth and uh, rousiness as part of the anti-muscarinic blockage. Then hyosamine is an anti-muscarinic as well. It also does the same thing, decreases the GI spasms and motility and almost similar side effects you see as well. Okay, hallucination is an exception which you see with hyosamine. So H4 hyosamine, H4 hallucination. So that's pretty much an easy topic. But remember, irritable bowel syndrome is not an easy disease to diagnose because there are symptoms, but there is no organic pathology. So many people think that this disease is actually in the head. People think about it, therefore you have to deal with this disease uh, at the psychological level, okay? So that's all about this particular disease. Next, we will uh, discuss another very important and very frequent disorder, which is the inflammatory bowel disease. So till then, take care of yourself.